It was, a, it was a very defining moment when he told me it was, um, you know, he's like, I want to, I want to tell you something. And it, it's, it's at that moment. I was like, okay, this, this is going to be the moment where he tells me and you just kind of know, but mm -hmm. again, it's not my place to pry or to ask. Um, but I, I knew eventually he would have to tell me for him, you know, because there's no, the, the people that were, I'm closest to in my life are my brother and my wife and mm -hmm. my family. And you have to be honest and open with those people, which allows you to be vulnerable, which is that's where real life happens, right? And songs so, get written. And songs <laughs> get yeah, written, literally. And I think that's an important thing that you just said, because when he told me, um, I just told, I, just, I remember saying I knew it and I got very emotional. And the emotion wasn't like, oh my God, my, my music career is over. It was like... <laughs> Wow, I, I felt so happy for him that he was able to tell me that. Yeah. And also it, it occurred to me, since we've been writing songs about love and all that stuff, and I was like, you know, and when we would do that, I'm like, okay, he, I haven't seen him in a relationship, but he knows about them. So I'm, <laughs> I, I, I have deduced it for a long time, and it made me feel happy to know that he's experienced all the love and loss that I have and anyone else in the world has, and he's able to share it with me. And mm -hmm. of course, me and my <clears throat> awkwardness. Also, I've, this is the third time I've mentioned crying in this show, so I, I clearly am a total softy. Uh, I mean, we, like, we all you're are. in the right room. You're in the right room. I am. I am. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a softy. But anyway, so <clears throat> of course, to break awkward tension i was like i just remember saying well you don't have to worry tj because the other member in your band is a raging heterosexual so wanna, <laughs> i'm here to bounce you out i just had to say something to kind of make someone laugh and i was like and it was after that that we just had drinks and i felt so much happiness and joy mm -hmm. uh for him and it was it was a beautiful beautiful night there also came an inherent risk that you obviously thought about. I mean, the, what was going to be the reaction? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and but then there was a time, you know, I think where I just got to the point where I didn't really care anymore what the yeah, reaction right. sure. was. And that was where it was like this moment of like, wow. And I talk about this in our shows now a little is just, uh, I, you know, I think that is one really beautiful thing in the pandemic is that it did really show me what little I need to be happy. Like, mm -hmm. we weren't touring. Like, our industry was getting decimated. John and I were losing crazy amounts of money. Mm -hmm. And I didn't lose a second of sleep. I was at home just with my family. I was having, I was actually having fun. You know, yeah. it was really nice yeah. to just play. Slept better. Board games and just do, just really simple stuff. And I was like, wow, I don't really need very, I need very little. Right. And, um, you know, it's the, the kind of catch in our business. And I think a lot of why a lot of people that have success end up having a lot of mental issues. And, mm -hmm. and, and John was when it really kind of hit me to this and through one of a therapist he was speaking with is that when you, you obviously you, you want to have success cause you think it's going to fix everything, but then you have a lot of success and it just gives you so much more to lose more headaches. And yeah. then, yeah. and then it adds to the anxiety of it all. But you, you're, you've got a lot of people you're employing. You've got a lot of things that oh, are absolutely. Yeah. responsibilities oh, yeah. multiply exponentially. Yeah. That, yeah. Everything I do isn't, it affects it's not just me. a lot of people. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, absolutely. And then it became a time where that was another element to that too. I was talking to like our manager, I, you know, I even talked to the label just to give them a heads up so they weren't blindsided yeah. by it. And I wasn't really necessarily asking for their permission, although they were incredibly supportive. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, that's one thing I would like to note. I talk about this often is that, you know, I talked to Duncan and Cindy Mabe and mm -hmm. who were the heads of, of Universal here. And uh, they were never once like, I don't know if this is the time in your career or, right, like, right. you know, they were like a hundred percent were behind you. And, um, and it was that way across the board. I didn't have sure. a single person. So, um, you know, uh, uh, with all that being said, I mean, it was, it was a moment where I was like, I felt very confident with it and it was the right time. And, uh, and since doing that, it, it certainly, I, I'm like, wow. I mean, everyone says it, everyone says that like, it's, there, there never really is that right time. It seems like, but everyone I think that comes out says they wish they had done, done it, it earlier. Yeah. 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 When did you know? Oh, a very, very young age. Very yeah. young, like oh, yeah. single digits. Yeah. Before, I mean, before I even understood what it, what it was. was. Yeah. 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 Wow, Absolutely. So yeah. you, you, you kept that for a long time. Oh, I know. Yeah. Now that's why I won't stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my shit. I got a lot to say. <laughs> 